We're now ready to talk about the last feature of JavaScript that I want to cover in this module, which is object inheritance. So in JavaScript, you have this syntax where we write class rectangle that extends the shape. And I want you to remember the example that I gave you in the previous video where I created a function shape and then I created a function rectangle and I show you how to use shape to build a rectangle. Now we're going to do a similar thing, but using this high level syntax of JavaScript. So we are declaring a new class called rectangle. It extends the shape. And now it has a constructor width and height. Note that we are defaulting the X and the Y. We're not providing X and Y just for the sake of simplicity. So we're initializing the X and Y to be zero. So we're passing it to the constructor of shape zero and zero. So when we say super zero comma zero, that's the same as initializing shape with zero zero. Then what we do, we do this dot width and this dot height and we update both, right? Same semantics as before. Then we create a new rectangle by doing new rectangle and passing the width and height that we want. And we can still use a method from shape translate and pass five to six, which will shift and update the X and Y fields of of a shape that are defined also in a rectangle. Okay, so this is the behavior that hopefully it is intuitive for you. You already understand class uh, extension, I hope, but if not, you are going to by means of translation, by means of breaking down this code into simpler terms with what we've learned so far. Before we do that, I'm going to introduce a very crucial feature that is actually behind the capability of inheritance of JavaScript. And as you will see, it's a very simple feature that allows us to have the same expressiveness as you would in something like Java, Java the programming language, not JavaScript. Okay, so let's look at this example. We are defining an object called animal that has a length and width fields. And um, I can write um, this object with the literal notation, right? I write brackets and then in, in under quotes, the, the field names and then the values of each field separated by, by, um, by a comma. And then I can look up with the bracket notation, also with the dot notation is also possible. But I wanted to make this example, I took this example from the paper, Essence of JavaScript. So what is the example doing? So I'm creating length and width, and then I can assert that length is, is defined and width is defined and foo is not defined. All right, so this is the first example. I invite you to copy paste this into your browser. So for instance, in my browser, I can always access the, the interpreter by doing control shift I. That brings up the, um, this very nice window. And I can clear it. I don't know how to clear it. Maybe pressing here, yes. Okay. And then I can copy paste the examples, for instance, like so and do animal you can see the animal is defined and it has a length and a width okay and now i can declare another field called another object called dog and now i want to say that the dog inherits from anim animal what i mean by inherits means that it's going to have all the fields that are defined in animal by omission So if I define var dog like so, and I use this special field called proto, I am linking dog to animal. Okay, and I'm linking it so such that if I do dog dot length, it is defined and it is still thirteen, right? And if I go to animal and I do length equals twenty. 
and I do dog dot length. Note, note that it is now 20 on dog, but I updated the length of animal. Okay, so by omission, because dog is linked by the proto field to animal, if I update the length in animal, I also update it in dog. So what happens if I update it in, in dog? So now I'm going to do length to be 30. If I update it in dog, now I override it, but I don't change animal. Okay? So the change only goes from animal to dog, but not vice versa. So if I update length here, I am it's still visible in dog. Since I overwritten the field of dog to be 30, now if I update the field to be 40 in animal, dog no longer sees any updates. As I mentioned before, the field is only accessible, the parent's field is only accessible by omission. So once you update a field, it is now yours and you have a copy of it. You no longer have access to the parent's definition. So if I want to have access to the parent, I wonder if I do del dog dot length. Uh, delete. Yeah. So if I want to clear the the current version of dog and I want to reset it back to the the field of animal, I can do delete dog dot length. Okay, but this is a very detailed understanding of how the field operates. I think the best way is really to to play with it. Uh, but the the main thing I want you to understand is that whenever I look up a field in dog, because dog was connected to animal by the field underscore underscore proto underscore underscore, it means that the prototype of dog is animal. Okay, and what that means is if you cannot find the field in dog, you look it up in the prototype. So because length is not defined in dog, then I have to look up the proto field. I see that it's an animal and I see if it's defined in animal, which it is. So then you return it. So this procedure might actually sound very familiar and I hope it does. So let's look at the next example. In the next example, what I do is I define a lab and I add a field to it called length two and seven. And now what I know is that length is overwritten. Oh, sorry, I only overwritten length. Because I only over it, overwritten length, width is still accessed from animal, right? So I'm looking up, is width defining the parent? No, I only define barks. Is width defining the parent of that? Yes, it is defined on animal, so return that which is why width is 7. Okay, so as you can see here, if I'm in lab, I have what fields? I have length 2, barks true, and width, this should be, what is the width? 7, should be 7, not width. Right? Dog has access to 3 fields, barks, length, and width, and animal only has 2 fields, length, and width. So what does this remind you? Yes, it reminds you of environments, the environment structure that we learned for, for racket, right? And that is, we can still use the same uh, example that we saw before, figure 3.1 of the SICP book. And what you will note is that I can recreate this structure, this tree structure in JavaScript by using the underscore underscore proto field where I link what was before a frame is now an object to a parent frame, which before was a frame, but now is an object, right? So now the boxes mean objects and the arrows are references underscore underscore proto. Okay, to recap, the object structure of JavaScript maps exactly the environment structure of Racket. And looking up fields works exactly the same as long as you follow the, the parent links 
through the underscore underscore proto field. Okay, that's what I, that's the takeaway from this slide. So, which means that you actually know ev everything you already need to know. You already knew JavaScript, or at least all the mechanisms that are underlying in JavaScript. What you don't know, or what you might possibly not know, is the, the syntax. There's one thing that is important, is to know that in JavaScript, actually, the underscore underscore proto field is deprecated. You shouldn't use it directly. The, the reason we're using it is just for education purposes. You shouldn't use it in your programming. Um, so there is a get prototype of and set prototype of, which is actually equivalent to using underscore underscore proto, but we are using it because that's what is in the paper essence of JavaScript, which I hope by now you've already read at least the abstract and went through a few pages. <laughs>